Ashy fam, welcome back. <laughs> How y'all doing? Ashy, Ashy, one, two, three. All right, we back, baby. So in the wide world of MMA, we had some good shit. Um, UFC card. Well, that um, the London card. Man, fireworks. I think that's the only time in history got them all right. Really? Oh, not not a one L. Damn, did I? No, I think. You mean betting wise or on the last podcast? Betting wise. Oh, okay. You going fun. with Jack Shore? C. Going with Jack. Um, baby, baby mirror had to go with Aspinall. Uh, even though I kind of went back and forth on this, I was like, I just don't, I can't trust Dan Hooker right now. So I took, um, I took Arnold and Arnold Allen, and he went, he went to work, made quick work of Dan Hooker. Yeah, I. I pretty much knew he was going to get murdered in there. Arnold Allen's a, a different type of talent right now. Mm-hmm. That was their first uh, live event, too, since the pandemic. Yeah. yeah I think it's been like, a while. I think they um, are starting to open it back up, like, completely now, where there's no restrictions. So we should see more action from this from the U.K. folks. And already said he's going to rearrange the schedule and go back this year. Oh, nice. And they got to have the, I don't know what you want to call them, the Wonder Twins on there. The Wonder Twins. Gotta oh, you mean Wonder me? Twins on there. Are you talking about Meatball Molly and Patty? Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Meatball <laughs> Molly, she was part of my, uh, my, my, Excuse me, my undefeated streak. Took took I took her. She would she, she put in some work. Got that knockout finish. That Beautiful was pretty knockout. Yeah. Let's talk about all these finishes. Yeah, man, for real. Oh, how fin- many that it was that night? It was it was like it just never ended. I want to say nine. They gave out nine performance bonuses. <laughs> oh yeah, it was nine. Yep. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. They said this card was so fucking great. Give everybody extra money. You can feel the energy from the crowd through, like, the TV. I swear. It was nuts. Right. Oh, it was hype. It was it was a hype event. And then every time, like, I, I had no audio because I was watching um, I was watching on my phone and I, while I was at the table. So I couldn't really have the audio. I mean, I could. But I want to hear what was going on around me. And every single fight was so quick. Like I had the only one that didn't go quick is is uh, I took the over one and a half rounds on Gunnar Nelson, and he went to unanimous decision. But everything else was quick. Yeah, that fight was probably one of the lackluster ones of the whole card. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I kind of expect that. I only see much out of Gunner I think he's uh, uh yeah I think he's but he's yeah I don't feel because he fought like a, a guy he was supposed to be like a huge favor against right he was minus 525 yeah yeah, that yeah was- I don't think that there's any Japanese fighters that are ever favorites anymore yeah we don't have any more uh Akiyama's suiting up for the UFC, so who knows? Man, maybe in this new, uh, in some, maybe in the newer generations, we might get some more. But it seems like China's kind of taking it, uh, taking over for the like the the Asian market, bro. Like they're they're going crazy. The Chinese fighters are they're putting on the show. I mean, well, there's when, a lot of a killer Asian talent. Uh, I think we get more Chinese because we have the Performance Institute over there and the uh, you know, um, Ultimate Fighters that we put on over there and stuff like that. 
but most of the Asian talents just go into Ryzen or One FC because they're they're paying big bucks for Asian talent. In the yes. UFC, when whenever they get a fight in the UFC, most Asian fighters only get like what one two fights, maybe like once a year most of the time. And they're the lower paid type, so I, I wouldn't really expect them to be in the UFC. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to travel across the world for 12 and 12. And right. So, <laughs> speaking of the guy that got paid 12 and 12, the guy that he got in a little scuffle with during, like, what was it, Media Week or whatever? How do you say uh-huh. his name? Topuria? Ilya Topuria. Okay. Ilya. What what you know any background on him? Did he move up from featherweight or something? I don't know uh, a lot of background on him. I do know he wants Patty Pimble bad. She might have had knockout of the the night if Molly didn't. <laughs> oh my spinning. goodness! She didn't hit the <laughs> spinning back elbow. He's a tough put... guy because he came back from a, a beat down in the first round. Yeah, he was getting worked. He was like somebody. He's like somebody called an ambulance. But not for me. That's where I've seen him from. He fought Hall. Yeah, he knocked oh, out Ryan Hall. Didn't he sub him? He, or no, he just nah, beat him. He knocked right? out Ryan Hall. He just beat him nah, down, right? He didn't, him, he didn't let him get him down, right? Or he got up or something? Yeah. He beat him in a, He punched him to sleep in his guard. Oh. You're right. So he was a featherweight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's a featherweight through and through. Because Jai Herbert had reach advantage and everything on him. But then he got knocked out like uh, in punch out or something. But that, was, that was brutal, dog. Like he, yeah, he folded like um, seven deuce. Yes. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. I loved it. And then uh, I caught it a little man. late. Yeah, but Meatball was like, she was in a slugfest and not looking the greatest, but then caught like the most beautiful knockout in the end. Could that, could that be an early contender for knockout of the year? Either one of them, yes. Mm-hmm. I say Molly caps it a little bit more. Yo, she was, she like hit the turbo button in the first round though. When she uh stunned yeah. the Luana, mm-hmm. when she mm-hmm. stunned her, she turned on the turbo button. I was like, she gonna be so tired. <laughs> and she and she was. Times. She wasn't that tired. She she had the uh, enough energy to run into the crowd and get that belt. Yeah, that's true too. Whose belt was that? <laughs> I I think they bought that belt on Amazon. Probably the old Chael Sonnen tactic. Yeah. The three hundred dollar replica, like the one that you get, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it has some weight to it. It's kinda heavy. Yeah. Hey. I don't think she can afford of, a three hundred dollar one yet. Speaking <clears> of Chael, <throat> you seen he got uh charged with what was it? Eleven, 11 count? counts, I think. Yeah, eleven yeah. counts of was it battery? Mm-hmm. Felony battery. How you one dude versus however many and you're the one getting charged. One dude against five. And they waited a while to char- press charges, too. I think they started seeing all the media hype about it and basically getting embarrassed where they kept seeing Chael Sonnen 5-0. and oh. <laughs> <laughs> And they were just like, man, I need to make money off of this. <laughs> Speaking of somebody getting charged, Jorge getting charged. Yeah. Street Jesus said um, it's on site, and he saw him, kept his word. Uh, apparently, yeah. apparently, my uh, on uh, Kobe Chaos gonna have to uh, have a date with the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, do you expect anything different from that? I mean, he he pressed charges against uh, Verdum for throwing a boomerang at him. That's, That's just true. who Kobe is. He really pressed charges? Yeah, he pressed charges against uh, Verdum for, for throwing boomerang. a boomerang at him. A boomerang? Mm-hmm. Yes. 
Did the boomerang make contact? I think no. so. It might have. It might have. It might have grazed his shoulder. But so they said Masvidal what chipped his tooth, cracked his tooth, or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It said tooth fracture, and it wouldn't. It said yeah. a un, it said a unnamed person, but you know it's Kobe because like, come on. Well, so that they were trying to say that like Masvidal is trying to hide his identity by having like a hoodie on and a medical mask on, and I'm just like, I don't think there is hiding Jorge Masvidal's identity when he's going against one of his best friends, <laughs> like. Or it's former best friends. I'm sorry. Friends. They used to be. They used to be best friends. <laughs> it's funny because like the 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 immediate outrage from like a lot of fighters was interesting. Like apparently, obviously all the details aren't out, right? So we have just snippets of news so like so, uh, some reports say that he kind of just snuck up on him hit him twice or whatever some people are saying that he beat the shit out of him some are like, like you like we read through all these little reports and some of the reactions from other fighters they, they could call him monster a coward like you know he sucker punched him all sort of stuff uh, and then you got like some people who are saying that like, okay, at what point does shit talking go too far? Like, yeah, I get like hyping up the fight, but when you're constantly talking about the other guy's family and shit like that, even though it's not personal to you or it's just business to you, it's not just business to his family or the people who or the um the people around his family who are getting uh you know mail all this like attention now because somebody's talking shit about them. Well, I mean, the the big difference for me in this situation, in this situation at least, is you know, Kobe knows his family personally. Kobe was with Masvidal's ex-wife you know, knows her very personally because she he slept on her couch and all that kind of stuff. So when you start talking shit about those people that you know so personally, it is a very personal thing, and I think you are going too far, to be honest. It's not like a Conor McGregor, you're in my DMs type bullshit. It's, it's like you know legit facts, and you are throwing dirt and shame out there. Like, it's bad. Yeah. It's hard to, it's, 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 okay, so there's a fine line, right? Because you, you had 25 minutes in the cage to do everything you want to do to him. And you did nothing but get, got like, wrestle fucked. So, right. There's that. But then there's also, like, like, you can tell, like, that bad blood won't boil over from just, that competition that they had so and this is not like Mazdal's first thing I mean he gave Leon Edwards a two piece in London and Leon didn't press charges he was just like you know shit happens bruv I got I talk shit I got hit bruv and I don't think that you have to look at him differently though because like the Leon Edwards well, I mean, yes, it's on site, and I get that, but you still have to take the view differently because when he attacked Leon Edwards, Leon Edwards provoked him. He walked away in an interview, gave him the, the three-piece in the soda. But when it comes to Kobe, you had 25 minutes with him. You fought him. You got embarrassed by Kobe. Now it looks like... Cause you, you had your time to shine. It does look like you probably sucker punched him. It does look like you took the coward's way. To be, in my opinion. But at the same time, it's also... You said a lot of shit, so that shit ain't gonna just disappear. So you do what you do. This also isn't Kobe's first run-in with another fighter wanting to fight him outside of the cage. 
he's already been threatened by Dustin Poirier. Um, and he said, like, you know, it's not like the same thing. Like, I see you, it's on. And, you know, a lot of other fighters, too. You know, like we mentioned the Verdum, the incident we mentioned. We didn't mention his little spats with uh, JBJ, but that wouldn't end well. I, I, I thought the first person that would probably do something crazy if they saw Kobe would be John. If they uh, have like happy run, run into each other outside in, Ve- in Vegas or something, because we know John has a history of like doing some crazy shit. So I felt like if anybody would be the first one to to, to like cash in that check, it would be John. But um, Masvidal said, "Nah, player." We live. We both live in Miami, and when you both live in Miami, and you have the same like income bracket, there's only so many places you can go. You can't really hide. You know what I mean? So that's the dangerous part for Kobe right there. He pissed off a whole gym of killers. Yeah, and he's still <laughs> hanging around that area. It's like, hmm, not a good look for you. Might want to try to relocate. <laughs> I thought he did though. Didn't he? <laughs> He went to MMA he Masters. He went a little further south. Yeah. He MMA be... Masters is still in that area. Mm-hmm. Oh. All right, all right. So let's get back to the London card. The little detour of some chit chat. So what do you think? What do you think it goes? Let's let's talk about Dan Hooker for a second. What do you think? It, it, where, do you, where does it go for him now? Cause he's on a he's been having a rough stretch, and he's dropped weight classes. You know, who was his last victory? Oh, I'll check. Hold on. Because <clears throat> yeah, he's, Bar- Barbosa. He's racking them up. Was Barbosa his last victory? Think no, so. no, no. Uh, the dude that looks like Kelvin Gastelum. Nazareth. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hakaparas, Hakaparas. <laughs> oh, I was never gonna get old. And then before that, it was Paul Felder. I think there's this is not an official episode until we butcher one name. Oh, it's like, guaranteed. We, oh, we got to butcher oh, it's them guaranteed. all. It's, it's gonna happen. <laughs> where, where do you think is where do you think it goes for him, man? He's gonna go to one thirty five now. <laughs> no, he should go back to one fifty five. <laughs> he gonna turn. He should go cowboy. back to one fifty five. Cowboy. cowboy. He's gonna be the Australian cowboy, or New Zealand <laughs> cowboy. I'm not sure which where he's from. Uh, one of those. That's his new nickname. No more hangman. Australian cowboy. Australian <laughs> cowboy. <laughs> we like got it. a Brazilian one. Now we got an Australian one. <laughs> Outback cowboy. You know he's game to fight. It's just he be coming up short. Bro, I think his. Well, I'll say this, at light at lightweight, he doesn't have any losses to scrubs, so he can still compete at a high level at lightweight, and still be very relevant. He just, you're right. He's going to be cowboy where he chokes at the the ones that matter. I just think that he's got too much um, accumulation of damage like over the course of his career. And that's why, like I said uh, last episode when we were discussing the breakdown between him and Arnold Allen, I thought that he's, I think that um, I'm a big Dan Hooker fan. I just think that sometimes you can't really bypass all that wear and tear. It's just gonna take, it takes its toll after a while. And when you have, you hear reports of him going bananas and in the gym and sparring with, um middleweights and heavyweights i mean yeah it's it's it is good iron sharpens iron but at some point you got to save that for the cage you got to save it for the stage you know like if you're getting all your best rounds in and you're getting um all these wars in the gym you won't have those like you won't be able to pull up pull from that and then put it on tape when it comes to going inside the cage because I feel like every time he gets into a firefight now, at least, especially in recent um, memory, he folds. Because you watch that fight, 
between him and Allen. Allen just hit him a few times, man, and then he was already just covering up. And the ref was just like, yeah, this is a wrap. I think he was just a, a little afraid of uh, – and changed a little bit by a Michael Chandler. Changed his outlook on that. Yeah. I mean, he had a war with Dustin. He yeah. had – um. Dan Hooker's been in some memorable fights. I mean, it's not like um, he's a lack for an excitement, and that's why I don't. That's why I asked the question: What do you think? He, where, do you, where does it go for him? I jokingly said he should move down to one thirty-five, but <laughs> I just I don't know. You, I, I get like him being like if you want to call him a gatekeeper now, but he's such a draw that it's like he's gonna always draw a big name. And then that means another tough opponent. So now are you just going to, like, have him be the testing ground for a new – for all the up-and-coming talent or maybe be, like, the exit stage for all the guys on the decline? Because he's, he's not the exit stage. Exit stage? Like, he's the guy – like, he's – he's when you're only a way out, that's you, you book a fight with uh <laughs> with Dan Hooker? Yeah, I think, he's, I, I think he's more going to be the stepping stone, the guy they throw out there to have a name on their resume, gatekeeper type status at this point. I think he's going to be, oh, God, who is that? Uh, Donald Cerrone? I can't remember the fight. I mean, Donald Cerrone is one of them. Cowboy. But, there's He's another not. fighter that I was recently thinking about that I can't remember the name of right now that he basically fights all newcomers. Maybe, um, God, why can't I think of his name? Derek Brunson? The one that literally just fought and broke a record for fighting everybody. Oh. Uh, Jeremy, not, not Jeremy Stevens. No, no, no. Uh, Jim Miller. Jim Miller. Yes. I think he becomes more of a Jim Miller where all the new prospects are coming in, and they they give him a tough, gritty name. Okay, okay. Well, in order to be Jim Miller, you got to be durable and tough. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Jim Miller has a long career because he spent a lot of time not getting finished. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I like I like the idea. I mean, he can hope he can only hope for that to have that long of a career because Jim Miller's been in the game for a grip. And as far as his opponent's concerned, Arnold Allen moving on up, buddy. Uh, Rising Bear, Rising Bear. Rising Bear. <laughs> Rising, <laughs> Raging Bull style. That boy's blazing right now. Isn't he still undefeated? In the UFC, yeah. In the UFC, yeah. Only got one loss. He's, he should be barking, sniffing at, a, uh, you know, the belt. Then, like you know, you should be getting closer and closer. I think if he puts away whoever he fights next, because it's definitely going to be somebody in the top five. One hundred percent title shot. But if he goes a decision, pending on who it is, he might have to fight one more for that number one contender status. He's he's looking damn good, and being in that uh, he's in that London market. I think he trains with Leon Edwards. Um. He definitely is going to get a bit of a boost. If they go back, they should have him on the card. Mm -hmm. He definitely 100%. 100%. Yeah, definitely. He's going to be on the card. I think if they go back to London, the people they're going to have on that card are definitely going to be Molly, Patty, and him. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is changeable. Oh, no. Aspinall will probably be on the card, too. Yeah, I'm say Baby, Baby Mir. Yeah, because Baby Mir just made a big statement. But we'll get to that. Well, we can get it. We can jump on it. We don't have to go in like chronological order of the card. He, he didn't work. Jesus. He did yeah. This, I, this shit out of Volkov. Yeah. I think the run back, if you go back and listen to what me and Mosey said, about Aspinall and how that fight would go with the last podcast, it was fairly accurate. <laughs> like on exactly how that went. 
Yeah. To be honest. He's a contender he put, now. Oh yeah. He put um he put him on skates. He put I I think we should just I think we instantly match him up with either Gon or or, or Tui Vasa. Woo wee. That'd be a Instant. good one. Considering he called out uh Tui. Let's mm-hmm. go with it. Yes. He's ready. Uh, I like that matchup a lot, actually. And those are both, like, newly contender contenders in the heavyweight division with both big wins right now. So that's a great matchup to me. Yeah, because you know it's probably going to be John Jones against Stipe for the interim belt. Mm-hmm. They just haven't said mm-hmm. it yet, but they're probably going to have to start saying something. International Fight Week. Mm-hmm. It's approaching. I feel yeah. like they're is a John Jones fight coming because John Jones has became so quiet. Mm. Like, he hasn't been in the media. He hasn't been trying to say shit, pick fights with anybody. So I feel like they have one already planned. They just haven't announced anything or made it completely official official. Or have a date yet. Yeah, let's hope very so. true. He's probably just like, wanna now? Want him now? All right. I can't let can't you get close. <laughs> I really think this dude stole the, the show of the whole card, though, was uh, Patty the Batty. Oh, yeah. I think no. so. I, well, the Wonder Twins stole the show. Oh, yeah, when Molly she, came in. With, she with her, did yeah, thing, yeah. and then we had the little slow pace fight. And then Patty did his thing. But one thing about him, man, he's... From what I've seen, he gets hit. He gets hit. So he can't be doing yeah. that unless he starts fighting like the upper rank guys. He's more of a grappler, right? Yeah, that's what uh, he's known. Supposedly, mm-hmm. you know. But I have to, I have to quote Big John McCarthy in this situation, though. Mm-hmm. He has struggled in the UFC with his he, he's gotten had to kind of come out of a little bit of adversity in both of his fights in the UFC, right? And he his, his only knock is his competition in the UFC has been so far lackluster. Period. Big John McCarthy literally said he has had better competition in Cage Fury than he has in the UFC so far. Oh, you think that's And if you're they're they're trying to If you're struggling him. at this point, right. They're trying to give him an easy path. So, my question is, is he going to be another uh O'Malley or is he going to become a Conor McGregor? Mm. I mean, well, I, I would imagine the UFC hopes he becomes another McGregor. Um they want as many McGregor's as they can get because that's, I mean, if you look at the sport and its popularity pre-McGregor and then post, it's two different things. And yep. the, amount, the amount of money fighters like McGregor, well, I can't even say that because there's only one McGregor. But well, he, brought, he brought a lot of eyes to the sport that – only came with him. But, I mean, there's a new day and age where you can be a very mediocre fighter like Sean O'Malley and still have the audience. So, can he be? is he going to become that too? It's his following. Uh, O'Malley's yeah. following that and the hair, you know. Just you see this guy and you're like, oh, who's this guy? I mean, Patty's been in the same boat right now. He has a giant following. Uh, they gave all the credit to the O2 Arena selling out to him and all that. So we're in the same situation. He's just fighting scrubs like O'Malley wants to. He even said the same thing himself. Like, until they start paying him more, he's not going to fight ranked fighters. Yeah, why is it? Why, it? No, that was – um. he means – you're talking about um Patty said the same oh, thing that uh O'Malley said. Oh O'Malley. 
Oh, well, yeah, why I'd would say you? that's Patty's fault. What do you mean? So, what do you mean? when you're coming into the UFC, mm-hmm. think of all the backing that Patty had. He had a country behind him. He had all this name brand behind him and everything like that. And he knew he was bringing in the eyes. He knew he was a star. The UFC admitted he was a star before even signing him and looking into him. And he still agreed to a 12 and 12? Come on now. That is his fault. That's poor management. That was a terrible idea, period. If if someone like... uh, What's his name? Who was the Super Saiyan that was at lightweight and... And 170 by Sage Northcutt. If Sage Northcutt can work his way into a $150,000 deal for his first contract, somebody with the backing of Patty Pimlet can't get better than a 12 and 12. That's on you, bro. Sean O'Malley at least has the excuse of he did he wasn't known until the Contender series. This motherfucker was all over the news before he was even tied to the UFC. He used to wear, like, the orange shorts and stuff. Orange shorts, that haircut everyone was looking at. Everyone wanted him in the UFC. He had the following. So, I don't even feel any sympathy for him because that was poor judgment on his his management-wise. Maybe he thought it was a zero at the end of the 12. You know, maybe he thought it said one, two, zero. Maybe. Maybe he was yeah, eating I, pizza and the red sauce fell on the contract. <laughs> and he covered up the numbers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think even Conor McGregor got a better contract than that when he first started. Because he had the same type of backing of Ireland. Oh, and they marketed the hell out of Conor. Oh, yeah. He got lots of love. Lots of love. I'm telling you. And the, the other part of that is supposedly the Patty Pimlet deal is an eight fight deal at that, which was another fuck up on his on his part. I see some renegotiating coming along soon. Real soon. I, I hope so. But I'm just saying he should have at most signed a three fight deal. And he should have definitely tried to work some more money into that. What happened to Brian? He just I'm washed here. off his suit. <laughs> no, I'm here. In that, in that bathroom pic right there. Bathroom selfie. So, <laughs> who you guys think Patty should fight next? Let's see the ranking. Um, he should fight someone that's good. I mean, like, a not... Well, he's non-ranked, right? He's not fighting somebody. He's not ranked. He's definitely right. not fighting somebody that's ranked. Okay. You don't so even he... think he should fight somebody in top 15? Mm-hmm. He, he should fight... Jim Miller. Stop. He's yeah, veteran. you don't want to end his... You know, he's got to prove himself. If he beats Jim Miller, he could go on the fighting a ranked fighter from there. Jim Miller... Jim Miller by Kale. You know who he actually matches up decent with? That I think he can probably somehow irk out a win with? Cowboy? Dan Hooker. Oh, my God. Hey, one of the Cowboys. (laughs) Aussie Cowboy. Because he's shown that he can touch people with some power. And he knows how to wrestle people down to the ground and jujitsu them. All of Dan Hooker's kryptonites right now. Out back, out back, out back, out back. But no, that's a terrible matchup. They shouldn't do that. Yeah, he gets he get, he get work. He doesn't need that that type of fight right now. Jim Miller is actually not a terrible idea in that situation, to be honest. Jim Jim Miller by violent KO. That's, uh, that's a bold prediction. O'Malley had a veteran fight too. What was the guy's name? Eddie Wineland, right? And he mm-hmm. knocked him out. Eddie Wineland, yeah. Yes. So maybe they should do something similar with that. Have him fight a veteran next. Then maybe fight another non-ranked 
up and comer, and then fight somebody in the top fifteen. How about Vanderlei Silva? At one fifty five. He won a now. I want to know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty no sure shit. Vanderlei's uh, tied up in contracts with uh, Bellator. Bellator. Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think Patty will be fine as long as he doesn't let him get too close. Actually, that's another thing I kind of want to bring up. I think Patty made a mistake, to be honest, by coming to the UFC. I think he should have one hundred percent went to Bellator. Interesting. Bellator is in the UK four to five times a year. They've got plenty of UK talent that they bring up, and their big stars are from the UK. I think that they would have paid him well, and just his, the competition would have been more comparable for him. Plus, he would have been one of their biggest stars over there. Well, so I think Bellator would have been a great move for him. Hey, Mark, do you think? But this is one thing I think about. I don't know if you all feel the same. Do you do you feel like that everybody's in it for the money? Because like some guys, I think they come to the UFC because of the prestige of UFC. You know what I mean? Yes. The name of UFC, like they don't really. I think they know. I think they might know their options. You know what I mean? Like they might know that they'll make more money in PFL or they'll make more money in Bellator. But if you happen to do really, really well in the UFC, it's a global brand. Yes, and I do think people come for either money or just come to the UFC because they want to be a part of the UFC. Mm -hmm. But the people that come to the UFC just to be a fighter in the UFC don't bring up pay. Right. So exactly. if you're bringing up pay this early in your career on your second fight, you didn't come to the UFC just because you wanted to be in the UFC. You came to the UFC and you were hoping to get paid. And in the future, I think he will get paid. Like, don't get me wrong. I think the UFC is going to put him on a Sean O'Malley or a Conor McGregor type increase as you start getting more notoriety, they're going to give you more money. But I'm just saying, as of right now, I think he could have became a bigger star and got bigger paychecks sooner in Bellator if you're already com complaining about it. I didn't know that he was complaining about it. I thought that it was just uh, brought up. But it was he, he actually made a uh, comment, I guess, about his yeah. pay. Okay. Yeah, dog. Yeah, you. That's that's uh that's on you, bro. You should have uh, yeah, sign go go elsewhere or ask for more, negotiate harder. Who knows? Yeah, it's a different situation when you're like a random up and comer that nobody knows and has no notoriety, but you just want to be in the UFC to get your yeah. foot in the door, and you agree to a contract like that. But it's it's completely different when you have the backing that he has. Yeah, I see him getting paid. Yeah. Next two, three fights, restructure something. Mm -hmm. He'll get it. So and I think I think they'll still build him, and he'll get some he'll get some highlights. He'll get some highlights. What were you gonna say, Brian? Um, do y'all want to move on to the next fight night? Yeah. This weekend's fight night, or y'all want to uh, spend a little more time on this previous? Because I, I, I'm looking at this um, fight night, and bro, man, I see some easy money. We could go on to the next one. I just want to say shout out to Paul Craig for making another win and jumping up three spots in the rankings. Oh, yes. Beautiful triangle. Paul Craig, T-City. <laughs> but yeah, the next card ain't a fucking sleeper. 
Some good fights, man. I'm looking at the prelims and, uh, you know, Jennifer Maya and Mannion Ferrot Fer- 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 the um, that blazing French chick. She's like eight and one on the rise. Mm-hmm. I think they're gonna put on a good show. And then we got a lot of uh, Russian action. Alice Kabab, Kiraziev, and uh, Kiraziev. I don't know. I don't know how to say that shit either. Dude, the dude he's fighting his name is a bus. A boost. A boost. Why on the UFC website did they put this man in black and white? Like, why does he have a black and white photo? I know he, he wasn't fully unlocked yet. He's almost unlocked. He's the next character to be unlocked. They're giving you the preview. <laughs> and the guy he's fighting, he's a mystery <laughs> character. I'm telling you. I know why. I know this answer. But the if preview you look at his for picture, the next he looked, download. He's like, oh, it's me? He looked surprised when they took the picture. He was also surprised. He was like, why are y'all using a black and white camera? <laughs> <laughs> what year is this? <laughs> yeah, this card is it's it's not bad. It's got a lot of uh if you're not a casual, but if you actually watch you'll recognize some of these names. Oh I mean the the prelims main event is fire. Got Neil Magny versus Max Griffin. Yes. Be something good. Max Payne Griffin. Ah oh, man, I, I really, I really like Max in this matchup. I want to see the numbers, but I feel like I would just unload on. Um, I would put a lot on Max. I, I like Neil Magny too, but I think Max takes this one, this matchup. If he's not a huge like like a crazy favorite, um, if they're close, if it's close, I'm put. I'm going. I'm talking about I'm Max on Max Griffin. Uh, he's the underdog. I know That's that. a rough one. Wait a minute. Neil Magny has a huge reach on him, and he yeah. knows how to use it. Very true. Very true. Um, I haven't seen Neil Magny compete a whole lot lately, though. When's his last fight? When's the last? Yeah, when's the last time Neil Magny was in the in the cage? Looking it up right now. I feel like it wasn't too long ago. I I, just, I can't remember. I can't remember. about a year ago, a little over a year ago, January twenty twenty one. Okay. Yeah, no, a lot to Kiesa. A lot over a year ago, bro. We in March, yeah. dog. <laughs> yeah, he, he that's why I was like a little over a year. <laughs> well, it was the end of January, so like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that man ain't fighting, man. He's uh, I don't know. And uh, but here's another one I like a lot. Mark, uh, Mark Dacasi, and uh, Bone Crusher. Bone Crusher versus um. Borshev, Vyacheslav, Borshev. That's the the guy, the kickboxer, really sick kickboxer that we, we, we watched a couple cards ago. That did the little dance, the little wetting dance, the little hey, hey. Oh, he did the little. That was him. I am unloading on him. I'm, I'm, I'm putting Max on him against Mark. Man, Picasso. you remember when Bone Crusher came in blazing? Blazing. And then he got, bro, Jakar close, stop, stopped his shine for real. And then from there, he just went on a tear the opposite way. Like every, every, so every bad. in between some of the losses, he would get a little win here and there, but it was never as impressive as like how he came out hungry and on fire. Right. He, he came out as a world beater. 
Yes. He looked like he was going to skyrocket to the top of the division and be a competitor. Oh, I'm sorry. A contender. But then he just he fizzled out. And it's sad because he's he's a very exciting and dynamic fighter. But yes. he just can't he's not consistent. Yeah, I'm put, I'm a, Max Max on Borshev. <clears throat> And I would take the under on one and a half rounds. Oof. Under. Oh, damn. Um, this dude's coming down from welterweight, too? Yes. This dude's a beast. Mm. He's, yeah. Un- He's under. a killer. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mac- Max and over, uh, Max and under one and a half rounds. Um, got some heavyweight action with some more, um, some more people from that, from the Eastern Bloc. We got Alexi Olenek taking on uh, Alir Latifi at heavyweight. Talk about oh. longevity and a career. That man got like 70 fights, bro. Jesus. Yeah. For real. He got 76 to be exact already. This will be his 77th fight. Yep. A lot of wins. Alexi Olenek, he can get his 60th win if he beats Alir Latifi. Right. That's a lot of wins, bro. And his, his grappling is nothing to be... Like, it's it's amazing. Yeah, he can he can he can get he he's a he's probably he probably has the most dangerous um, guard in heavyweight because he he finishes a lot of guys from the bottom. Yeah, with that easily yeah. the the most dangerous guard in heavyweight. Can we not call? It, can we change the name? If he finishes a Lira Latifi, we have to officially change it from the Ezekiel choke to the uh, Olenek choke. I'm all for it. I'm already all for the uh, Olenek choke. Well, Alir Latifi is a grappler, too, so this, we, we might see them on the ground. Or this might be a really nasty, ugly, slow, sloppy kickboxing fight because both guys are good grapplers. Right. I think Liar's going to try to keep it standing, to be honest, against against them. Because he's more of a wrestler, and I don't think you want to be an Olenek's guard. Correct. Period. I'm like get, get, taking a little TV, taking Olenek down is usually the only person I, I've ever seen take Olenek down and do anything real with it was Curtis Blades, but he got DQ'd. <laughs> he got DQ'd. Yes. Yeah. He beat the fuck out of Olenek, and then. On the way up, he threw a kick at Olenek's face. I think he like he. I think he missed, but they called it a foul, and um, Olenek didn't continue. They stopped the fight. Oh, is it down the opponent? Down the yep. opponent. You kicked to the body though. <clears throat> Khalil you Round kicked to the body. Khalil Roundtree showed us the way. I mean, he's all he's best. That's kind of has been his thing. He's he does that. If you look, if you look at his whole career. That's that's kind of. That's 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 Khalil's move, the soccer kick to the body. Yeah, we got our, my my boy coming back. You know, um, Kai Carl France or KKF, if you know the homie, taking on Askar Askarov. Every, t- I think it's the nineteenth Russian on this card. The nineteenth, like, tell me the Eastern Bloc, bro, is taking over, bro. East side, it's all the homies. <laughs> I mean, they taking over, bro. Hey, this fight might have a uh, possible contender implications. Yes, I don't even want to talk about that. That, that. That's why I brought it up. That that irritates me so much, to be honest, because Kai Kara should already be fighting for that title. He should be the one with the next title shot. They should not be running that fight back again. Well, Askar has no losses, right? A loss, maybe. No, he's undefeated, bro. One, yeah, one, he's undefeated. One draw. He has one no contest or something like that. It could be a no, draw. One draw. I think when yeah. they put a no contest, they put NC. Oh yeah. I'm taking Kai Car France. I, I I think he's on a he's on a rise. He's looking very bullish in, in um his career right now. I'm I'm riding the wave. I'm gonna ride the KKF KKF raid. 
uh, wave. The only thing that makes me nervous for real is like the post Garbrandt hangover. Everybody that fights, uh, not everybody that fights Cody Garbrandt has a bad fight their next fight, but they definitely don't have a good fight their next fight. Is he they, under, it's looking that way. It looks like if you when you, if you starch Garbrandt, that your next fight, you either win or lose a close decision. If you starch Garbrandt, that's like that's been the thing. Think, think about all Garbrandt's knockout opponents. Who, who like and look at their next fight. Dillashaw got slept by Cejudo. It's not gonna be good. Who does uh, Pedro Munoz fight after Garbrandt? Wasn't it Aldo? Cruz? Oh, was it Aldo? Jeez. Or was it Cruz? Oh, let me check. So that that one is a draw, and that was his UFC debut against a little-known fighter named Brandon Moreno. Oh. Okay. Other than that, he beat Elliot and Benavidez. So he's got some good names under him. So this this is a some hitters. Munoz lost to Aljamain Sterling. Unanimous decision. Oh, the champ. UD. Yep. Telling you, man, you, you knock out Kobe, Cody Garbrandt, your next fight. You know what? I've, actually, now that I think about it, man, I might, I might load up on after all, dog. Because, like, <laughs> I put him in, like, a, a – I might just put Kai, little Kai Kara in, like, a, um, a little three-piece or something. <laughs> uh, Matt, the immortal Brown, bro. This man is closing in on his what? 42nd fight, 43rd fight. <laughs> oh, you like that. Is it that many? 20, I think it's exactly 43. So it's be 44. 44th fight. Yeah. Yeah. Dope. I'm telling you, he's been my boy for a long time. I love watching him fight. But he about 45, ain't he? Damn. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, though, here's one good thing about Matt Brown. He's not that active. So he's not taking a whole lot of damage. I like him versus Brian, Brian Barberina, personally. I'll, I'll take Matt Brown in that fight. Uh, it's been a while this this is an entertaining Barbarina. fight. Yeah. I mean, Barberina's tough as shit, too. So this is going to be – this is one of those fights that Matt Brown uh, shines in. He's, he, I think he does really well when he's fighting another guy that relies on their toughness. Like if it's if it's like another person that's extremely skilled, I usually go with the other guy over Matt Brown. But when it's like pure horsepower, pure toughness, Matt shines in those fights. Like I think those are the kind of wars where he really looks like a fucking world beater when he goes up against a guy who's like trying to see who's the, mo- the who's gonna be the toughest guy in the cage. He usually comes out on top. And I love him for it all the time. Yes. He's basically Bam like, Bam's a killer too though. Oh yeah. In that sense. No, he's that's what I'm saying. Like he's they're both like really like these gritty, tough types. You know what I mean? Where you get a war. You know, you can't you're yeah. not gonna run over either one of these guys. Um Matt Brown to me is like if Robbie Lawler was target, Matt Brown would be Walmart. You know what I mean? Like they're both like that. They're tough as shit. And I don't mean I'm not trying to make a. Uh, I'm not trying to put a knock on Matt Brown when I'm saying that. Matt, Rob, Matt, I mean Robbie's been a, t- a champion. That's why I'm giving him the target moniker. Whereas Matt Brown always open dog. Target close at ten o'clock. <laughs> you know what I mean? Matt Brown always open. So, but where's all the entertainment? Walmart. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is true. Yeah, that is. True. Yes, sir. No, I've always I I'm, I love Matt Brown. He's been one of my top fighters for a long time. I've known his exact ceiling, where he was going to top out at, but I do feel like his career probably should be over. I don't want to see him Diego Sanchez it. And take it way too far. 
but I I'm I'm gonna watch this fight, and this is a good good matchup. I think this is a good pairing. And yeah, I would just call him Robbie Lawler with chest hair. <laughs> Robbie Law, he said. Rob, Robbie Lawler has no hair. <laughs> what do you mean with chest hair? Robbie Lawler has no mustache. He ain't got no beard. He got a bald head. And man, shave everything. I think he just bathes. He might take a shower in there. It's a shower in there. <laughs> Rob, Robbie Smooth Lawler, smooth. <laughs> he had to get that wind resistance off. For real. Faster punches. <laughs> Hey, you know how they live? You know how they used to list, list the old school stats? Like smooth swimmer. Extremely slick. Slick cardio. Your girl's on there, man. Joanne Calderwood, aka recently married Joanne Wood. She said yeah, her she name moved, changed a lot. She moved that Calder. She's like, <laughs> it's just wood now, bro. <laughs> You know what? If, if me and Joanne got married, if she like like divorced that dude, and then me and her got married, it would be the same last name, which is an S. She would go from Calderwood to Wood to Calder to Woods. She, yeah, she, her shit would just be plural. <laughs> she but had she, all the woods already, so she's Woods now. Well, she can get some more wood in her life. Alexio, <laughs> not, not really. I was just joking. Um, Alexa. <laughs> Grasso. <laughs> Alexa Gracio uh coming at 13 and 3. I think this is a breeze. I'm taking Alexa, bro. She's uh she's going to the top. Going to the title. So I, I used to I, think I, that about Alexa. I used I still, to think I that still about believe. Alexa. She she's kind of up and you know, down. Like I I was a huge fan of her when she first came. And I thought she was going to go straight to the top. I still you don't believe, believe in no more. Wrong. You don't believe no more. She moved up in weight, right? She didn't come so. down from yeah. thirty-five. She went up from uh, straw weight. Yeah, yeah. This is a this is a this is a uh, flyweight fight. So she she could probably yeah she probably get the next title shot if she wins. Because I mean, oh, what are you gonna give Valentina yeah. after the next girl? I just feel that every time I try to count out Calderwood, Wood, I'm sorry, Joanne, she always pulls something out. She That's really so does. So does. I, I just have this weird feeling about this one where I know that Alexa Grosso should win this fight hands down, but I just feel like Calderwood's going to pull out something. She's going to be Calderwood forever. She's always going to be some type of Wood. <laughs> Joe, we call her Joe Wood. Joe, um, Joe. You see her going. Joe, Joe. In this fight. Any takedowns? You see her going. Unless Alexa down. wants to. No. I I, uh, uh, wait. Joanne Wood. Joanne. No, I don't think so. This is gonna be a kickboxing fight. Boxing versus kickboxing. Alexa is just so crisp with her punches, though. She is. Like, so like I just I just see Joanne getting beat up, man. Like I just see it as a long night, a long like lots of jabs, lots of lots of one twos, and I don't see a finish in this one, but I do see Joanne getting her head boxed off. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah, I, I don't I don't I'm not super confident enough to go like a max bet on this, but this is definitely a, a, at least one unit. Um, I, I'm taking Alex. I think this is a breeze. Now, this one, this is actually this is another fight that I think I feel like uh, you can just you can kiss the baby on this one. Curtis Blades versus Chris Dawkins. I think Curtis runs run through him, runs through him. This is the brother of the other guy, right? The middleweight. Yeah, yes. correct. His brothers are they're both good. Um, I just think that like. When he go, when Chris Dawkins goes up against some of these bigger heavyweights, he just gets manhandled, bro. Like, and Curtis Blaze is a monster. He's fucking huge. You know what I mean? Like, he's like six five, damn near three hundred. 
then he like he he's the only guy in the heavyweight division right now that has a a real wrestling threat. Like I guess you can say Stipe does, but he's not active. Uh, and I guess you can, if you go if you count NCAA and Gano, <laughs> then yeah, I guess you got an argument. But realistically, nobody consistently gra- has real double legs like straight up power doubles and chain wrestling like Curtis does. And he when he gets you on the ground, it's violent. His ground and pound is violent. Like he don't. Eek out. He don't lay and pray. He he smash. So unless Chris Dawkins can like, even if he forces, I just don't even see him. Even if he forces it to be a kickboxing fight, Curtis just has so much reach, and he's so good at using it. Outside of getting like flatlined, but well, they both got flatlined by Derek Lewis. <laughs> yeah, yes, they both did. Yes. But outside of that, you don't see Curtis Blade struggling in stand up normally. You don't see that. Like you Unless normally he Francis. Yes. It's like Yeah, but that's Francis. <laughs> right. No, this is only three losses, if you think about it. Two to Francis, one to uh Derek Lewis. Lewis. And one no contest to Alexio Linnet. The only knock you can do against Curtis Blades, in all honesty, is he does not know how to mix it up. Right. He does not know how to switch from striking to wrestling. Most of his double legs, although powerful and are probably going to put you on his ass at your ass anyways, are very telegraphed. And that's his only knock. Do I think that Dawkins can take advantage of that? He should be able to, but I don't think he will. I think this will be a pretty much cut and dry ground and pound affair. We've been saying that about Blades for a while now. You don't think he might have fixed that yet? Yeah. No. Well, he well, here's here's his chance to prove it because he's been close his whole uh, his whole career and he's young. He's been close like he like you said, he's either off or on. He's either standing or grappling. And the best guys, what makes guys like, um, here's an example of a guy who mixes it up very well and makes it seamless, like a guy like Kobe, guys like um, DC. They don't just wrestle. Um, They mix in the strikes well. And I guess, well, I mean, recently speaking, I would would have said Usman, but he recently he's been just most primarily a stand-up guy. He hasn't been doing a whole lot of wrestling at all. But um, Curtis is either I'm striking with you and I'm at striking distance or I'm going to engage in grappling as opposed to like changing levels and mixing it in with the strikes seamlessly. He does attempt to do it, but it's not seamless. It's not like it's not smooth, but that may be a case of he just he's not seasoned enough to do that. Because he, when he came in, he was just a wrestler. And then he learned how to strike. And now he's like, and that happens to every wrestler, right? In UFC, when they, they first come in, they just they rely on their wrestling to get the wins. And then they fall in love with their hands and they stop they kind of abandoning their, abandoning their wrestling, a, a la Justin Gaethje and many others, when they fall in love with their hands. But rarely do you get the guys that put it all together where they have the striking prowess, um, and they can wrestle at will, and they do it at, when the moment's right. They counter you when you're when you're rushing in, boom, you're on your back. Or when you're backing up and backpedaling, they're you're falling, they're following you with punches. Kind of like um, like the one one of the best to ever do that was GSP. That's what I was about to say. Yep. GSP was the best at mixing it up in that sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, but I have faith that Curse Blades can learn it if he really puts his mind to it. I mean, if Damian Maya can learn how to mix it up, then he can learn how to mix it up. So, go for and, it. And if he can, I think it'll bode well. It'll bode well for him because, like, he, he's right in that top five 
at the heavyweight division. Like, there's not many guys. I mean, he he said his three losses are to the champion and Derek Lewis. Losing, getting knocked out by Derek Lewis. Look, you're in a long line of guys, other guys who have to. I mean, that's just kind of that's Derek Lewis's thing. Um, However, with these with this recent rise of new talent like Bam Bam Tuivasa and now Tom Aspinall, Curtis has to impress. Right. He has to impress. He can't have a okay eke out a victory here. He got to dominate. And if he does dominate, that's going to be huge going forward because who knows, man, like this with, with the state of the heavyweight division and how UFC is handling the Ngannou situation, all the big names got to be putting their name, throwing toss their hat in the ring to say like, hey, this is my time, you know? Yep. So. Yeah, and I mean, especially if things go south with Nagano, and you do have that John Jones versus Steve Bay interim, you're fresh out there now. You're you're sitting there. You haven't fought either of those guys yet, mm-hmm. so therefore it's an interesting bout. So if you can make a statement now, you can get that. Or even if you make a statement now and then you fight Tom Aspinall next because they're so close together, you can make a statement off that too. Mm-hmm. If, if if Curtis Blades comes in here and wrecks Chris Dawkins on Saturday, if he, if he, I mean he runs Chris Dawkins over. Gets a TKO victory, first round finish. Talks some shit on the mic. I mean, he's really not very. Att- I mean, he has a speech impediment, so um, he, he can definitely make a call out. If he's like, f- 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 "Fuck you, Tom Aspinall, whatever the fuck," he took my shine, motherfucker, and he comes out and he wrecks Tom Aspinall. He's undeniable as far as title shots are concerned, in my eyes. Even you know though, what? Even though Bam sure. Bam. Even though Bam Bam to be possible. <laughs> it's like on the recent tear. I'm giving him love. I'm giving um Curtis Blaze love, dog. I'm sorry. I'm 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 making a case for him getting the title right now. I get it, but when you were just describing all that, all I could imagine is Curtis Blades coming out with the exact same speech that Nate Diaz came out with. Yes. with the, You're taking everything I work for. Yes. If, I, I, if he says it that smooth, like if he for real gets all the words out like you just said, instant fucking sound bite. One hundred percent. I think you go after surreal though. Ooh, okay. And I like him in that matchup. I do yeah. like him in that matchup, actually. Yeah. Okay. I like. I, you know what? Now you. Now that I think about it, that is an ultimate. Like I know how I, I, Chris Dawkins is probably like. If he, if, if I know he ain't listening to this shit, but if he, if he was, he'd be like, man, fuck I'll y'all. Tag him on Twitter. We automatically just count his shit as a loss. Damn. He's gonna be looking and, for us. For real. But I heard you was talking shit, bro. I got this. I'll, I'll tag him on Twitter. For real. On this. I'm just gonna tell him I can't let you get too close. <laughs> Wanna now? I'm gonna tell him. <laughs> I'd be like, you come after me, I'll Kobe your ass and call the cops. For real. <laughs> it's like, you think um, you'll boost the fuck out of our podcast? I'm a, uh, you'll buy us all new equipment, huh? We will have a studio set up like JRE. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> I'll appreciate all of it. For real. We had to wear an ass with him for a few weeks. <laughs> you had to wear an ass with him for a few weeks. That's cool. I look cute with a black eye. I don't care. Break my orbital. Let's go. <laughs> I need time off from work and the money payment. Yeah, I need, I need a few weeks off anyways. Let's go. I'm ready for a vacay. Man, man, man. I, I really, you know, there's some beast Fights on this card that got canceled too. I mean, like you look at like Rakic and Blovich. That was supposed to be this one, right? This was that supposed oh, to be no, that no, event. No, no. It's uh, May. That's in May. Why does it say March? Why does it say? Well, no, no, no. I mean, wasn't that supposed to be? It got moved to May, right? It was originally supposed to be March twenty sixth. Was it because of uh? Didn't somebody have an injury and they just pushed it back? 
Yeah, uh, Jan. Jan did. Oh, Blahovic against who? Rakic. Alexander Rakic. That was supposed to be on this card. I just had a... I was thinking Glover versus uh, Yuri. Oh, oh yeah, Prohachka. I don't know why I was thinking that. Yeah, that was... This was... Hey, um, hold one second, please. Yeah, the... On a side note, while we hold him for a second, Chimaev's coach said that Conor McGregor joining forces with them would be the best thing he can do for his life. Huh? Maev's coach said that he wants Conor McGregor to join with him. I think I'm going to teach Brian uh, about the mute button on the microphone. On the mic? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to teach him about that. that. Yeah, I think so. Sound like construction work over there. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Neither do I. I heard the dishes earlier, though. I think that was JP. Uh, one of them. Let me see. I didn't see him that time. Was not looking. I think that was Craig. That was Craig. Yeah, that was Craig. Dang. So when is that uh, Rakic against uh, Jan fight? Oh, it didn't get pushed back. It just got... It's, they don't know when it's going to happen. They don't know yet. Was it like a COVID type thing or... I think Jan got uh, neck surgery. I think that's what it was. Makes sense. Because you remember when he fought Glover, he, he tapped out so fast. I think yeah. he already had the neck injury from that fight. Like, going into that fight, I think he had the neck injury. So, I imagine he tried to let it heal on its own. And then it probably didn't heal well, so he ended up just getting uh, neck surgery. Or he might have really you- injured it training. Are you talking about blow? Yes. Yeah, it was a neck neck injury, mm-hmm. right? I think so. Polish power. Oh man, I can't wait to do the uh the pod for this Jacksonville card. Oh yeah. I'm so excited for that card. That card's fucking stacked too. We got a whole weekend without a fight. Beforehand. <laughs> Okay, it'll just build my thirst for it even more. It'll make that day even more special. It's gonna be good. Man. Hey, we got a uh, like tailgate or something because I ain't about to sit in no. Uh, I ain't gonna. Yeah. I ain't. I ain't spending. You no know, extra I love intuition. In place. Right. You ain't gonna pimp me out. You know what, man. You know, I think it's the best play. Excuse me. Parking somewhere close, like like somewhat close by, but not really. And then walking to like intuition and all that shit, and just chilling there before the fights, and then walking to the arena. We'll discuss. That. Well, yeah, but intuition wants wants that extra extra. No, I mean, we don't, we, don't have to, like, we don't have to actually hang out there. I mean, just like literally walk to the venue. So, and then like walk back to our car somewhere in yeah. the distance. Yeah, because we, we was punished last time. That's how I think it's <laughs> trying to get out, bro. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I mean, the way I got out, I got some extra fights to watch. So it was what it was. Well, we'll get to see those extra fights on ground floor while we're walking. <laughs> I just don't want to drive through that shit again. That was brutal. Are you guys ready to call it? I, how do you feel about this real quick, though? Dan Hardy is in talks with Eagle FC. Because he says he's never going to retire. 
To do what? Commentate? No. He wants a fight. Dan Dan Hardy? Dan Hardy wants a fight. At at light light heavyweight? I don't know what <laughs> weight division. I thought he was trying to go down. Maybe to 165? I say 165. They have a 165 division in Eagle FC. Are we? Are you hinting at a Kevin Lee versus Dan Hardy matchup? I wouldn't hate that matchup, actually. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, oh, actually, actually, you know who he, he said would be a great fight for him in Eagle FC. He said Tyrone Woodley would be a great fight for me in Eagle FC. Oh, yeah, they got a little uh, back and forth, right? Mm-hmm. Ooh. The return of the title. I say make that fight. I like it. If, like, Unless Woodley has made too much money fighting Jake Paul. Uh, well, I heard the be playing good. I heard a B was okay, breaking bread. I heard a B was breaking bread. So um, the frozen one. Let's see if we can unthaw the skills, and then let's see if um, Dan Hardy can <laughs> come off the couch and put on some put on a show. I don't know. I don't think so. I would take Tyron than that. Yeah, so would I. Well, I, I don't know actually. I mean, Dan just hasn't because I mean. I believe in ring. Dan rest. hasn't fought in a long time, and ring rest is a thing. No, a long. But he's also saved himself. He's also saved himself from all that uh, chin damage, which no, no, is no. Woodley's That's facts. problem. That's true. But he hasn't been swung at in a long time. Like he, he when's the last time Dan Hardy was in the cage? Two thousand seven or some shit. You know what I mean? Like it's been a long <laughs> while. It's been a long time. No, that's, I'm being, I'm exaggerating. Like maybe 2011. Been, yeah, it's been a long. I don't think time. you're too far off to be honest. 2012. It's been a long time, man. And I can't let him get too close. I can't let him get too close. Let's see. When was his last fight? His last fight was 2012. Amir Sadala. Wow. I haven't heard either one of those names in so long. Amir Sadala, bro. <laughs> hey, man, he's on a two fight win streak, though. <laughs> Who, Amir or Dan Hardy? Dan Hardy. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. That's, uh,. Surprising to hear, actually. I mean, yeah, he was on a four-fight losing streak before those two wins, but only to, like, the best of the best. His loss was uh, George St. Pierre for the title, and then Carlos Condit, and a somewhat known person called Anthony Johnson. You know... That was somehow made welterweight. Hold up, what? At some point. How? I don't even remember. I knew Rumble was down at welterweight before when he fought with uh, the dude, yeah. Kevin Burns or whatever. He got poked in the eye, right? But he fought Dan right. Hardy at welterweight? Oh, bro, yeah. He, bro, he lost to Koscheck at welterweight. Oh, yeah, he got wrestled. He, yes. he had a couple yeah, he got, fights there. He got really, he got really get choked at it. Uh, Koscheck finished. Dude, I can't I can't believe I forgot about that. But he also claimed the lives of some have some welterweights. <laughs> I mean, their career was started and then it ended because they fought Rumble at Welterweight. I don't know how he made weight, man. What dude, I I mean he barely did. And he looked like he was fucking dying every time he fought. Yeah, he looked like um he looked like uh, 50 Cent in that movie where he was sick. Remember that movie? Like, he had the little... That he looked like an AIDS patient or some shit. No. Yeah, like, I don't know. You don't remember that shit? Like, it was like one of those little bootleg movies that went straight to Netflix. 
Damn, straight to Netflix, not even DVD. Well, back well back in the day, like straight to Netflix was a like a a disc, but now it's a flex because like if you go straight to Netflix, it's probably like it, it's, a, good. A, it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's a, it's a, yeah, but not back in the I, day though. Not back in. The, well, I mean, oh, maybe 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 we can credit Fifty for making that a thing. I don't know. Who knows? Vitamin water. Fuck it. For the hardcore hardcore fans, though, I will say this. If you want to really up on the MMA fights this weekend, you should also watch the 1FC fight card. Because some of the Rod most Tang, epic right? battles. Yes. Mighty Mouse and Rod Tank? Woo! Yes. Dude, that just some of the most epic like battles. In Five in the morning. I still, though, I'll I might awake. actually try to watch that live. Be awake probably. Because this is ridiculous what how is good this on? card is. 26. It's I'll Saturday. Be I'll be at work. I'm going to have to watch that while I'm wow. working. I like Mighty Mouse in the stay second up for round. That one. In the MMA round? Yes, I like Mighty Mouse in the second round. Because the first round's kickboxing, right? Yep. Do you think he survives? Okay. Yes. Yeah, I actually do think he survives. Right. I think he can stay away enough to make it to the... How many minutes? Three minutes? Or is it three? Are, are they, uh, uh, five I minutes? think it's three minute rounds. No, no, I think they're three minute rounds. Oh, okay. Even How many rounds? Because it's like a mixture. You think it'll be it like five? three minutes, then five, then three, then five? No, no, no. I think it's three, 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 but they go kickboxing, MMA, uh, kickboxing, MMA. Something go, like that. So it's a four round fight? That's I want to say it's five. <sighs> So it's kickboxing, MMA, kickboxing, MMA, and then what the fuck's the last round? Boxing? I Maybe think they're just both. whatever what? goes. Oh, I don't think they expect MMA, you to MMA. go that far. <laughs> he says kickboxing. <laughs> so it's MMA. Street fight. <laughs> kickboxing in like WWF. Well, their rules are, are way different from the UFC, so I don't even know. Facts. Well, that... That's a completely different fight, period. Like, that fight is on its own rule set, period. Like, <laughs> it's, it's all over the fucking place. It's kickboxing, MMA, kickboxing, burp, MMA, and then a motherfucking pie-eating contest. But could you imagine Rotang throwing a soccer kick in one of the MMA rounds to fucking Mighty Mouse's face? K.O. Yeah, that's that's done. Done. I don't even care if he guards it. That shit's done. <laughs> yeah, I I'm miss pride. With, uh, submission, Mighty Mouse, second round. Are you going to call fair. actual uh, submission? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Mighty Mouse, armbar. You think he tries to do the mighty bar? He's not he gonna like... slam him. Well, he might slam him. Actually, I, don't I think know. he might. He might. I was about to say he might slam him. I think Rod Tang's smaller than him, ain't he? Like, what, what weight are they even it's... fighting at? Because I know it's not flight weight. I want to say thirty-five, ninety-five pounds. Oh. He, uh, <laughs> DJ doesn't fight at. 25 anymore. <laughs> he has to fight at his natural weight, so I think he's actually fighting at uh, Bantam. So 35. I think my dog is like that same weight. <laughs> Angela Lee fighting for her title that yep. night, too. So K KGB? She's fucking killer. No. Not that Asian one. Angela Lee. Oh, okay. <laughs> I she, she, she left the other part that she left, left the UFC and then blew up. <laughs> she like I turned Asian and then now I'm the champ. Uh, AGB probably has her, her best something. chances. <laughs> what? She, like her whole family fights over in one FC, doesn't doesn't they? Like isn't her brother <laughs> Maybe. champion over there and then uh Yeah, her brother's a champ too. Her other sister just started fighting too. And her cousin, so. her mama. I think the mom's a coach. Yeah, I think they're gonna have be a family of champ. Oh yeah, I, she is a coach. 
She coaches all three of them. Mm. But yes, those will be exciting fights too. This is not a weekend to miss. Who do you Even think, if you have to do the recaps, you should watch them. Who do you think has a tougher time at the dinner table? Chris Dawkins or Antonia Shevchenko? Stop. Mm. Like if they're Shevchenko. going for that, like if they're reaching for that last slice of pizza or that they're reaching for that that, that last chicken breast, right? Like, do you think they just like relegate it? Like, do you think uh, Chris is like, go ahead, dog, you got it, and or Antonio's like, here you go, uh, like Valentina, like she's like lets her have it, or is it like a stare down, or does like the parents get in the way? Because I could imagine them both. All living with their parents still, and like, <laughs> and then like, I can imagine like the mom just giving it to like the winner, the winning Dawkins, and then the winning Shevchenko. Just like she was always my favorite anyway. Obviously, I love her more, and then like, <laughs> like handing her the pizza, and then looking the other one in the eye, like while she's doing it, like, like yeah, this could be you, but you know. <laughs> but you didn't win, though. I'm going to say it's the, I would uh, say... the males that have probably the tough time because I don't think the little sister is going to beat up the older sister. No, okay. I think it's the opposite. I think Ooh. it's the exact opposite. Mainly because, at least with uh, the DACA situation, big brother still big brother. He's got size and he's got mass and he can still big brother his, his smaller brother. Okay. But... Yeah. In the Shevchenko situation, they're in the same weight class. And she can literally just look at her and be like, you will never be champion. I think it's the mental. Period. Thing. That's what I'm going with. The mental I'm, just thinking, I'm, just, I'm just thinking of it like, I know they probably hang out and shit. And like, what if like, they suck at everything else in real life? Right? Like, like, <laughs> like, 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 like they, they'll be playing darts, right? And then Chris is just fucking owning this little brother. And he's just like, bitch, but you got four losses. You know what I mean? Like he, he can like you know like he went this, like he like I think uh, I think the reason why what's baby Dawkins is it Chad Dawkins? What's his name? What's his name? Emilio Kevin Kevin Dawkins. I don't know. I, I think that up. I Kevin up the air Steve. I don't know Steve Dawkins. Steve Dawkins. Hold on, wait. Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins. That's his name. No, I'm just making, I'm spamming. Spamming? I'm gonna get one right. Curtis. John. Kyle. It's Josh. Kyle. Kyle? It's Kyle. Kyle, Kyle Dawkins. I oh, think Kyle. Man, I was way off. Kevin. <laughs> oh, you did. I would have Kevin. never guessed Kyle, to be honest. No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have gotten. Maybe he give me a hundred swings. I might have said Tyler or something. For real, I was going through all. I said Chad Dawkins. At first, um, I think Kyle might be so tough because his big brother probably used to whip his ass all the time. Think about it, because that's kind of what you get. Like when you have like the little brother usually be the killer, because you look at like Jones, he's like the middle child, but he got like an older brother and then like a, he got two NFL brothers that are big as fuck. And I'm pretty sure they didn't get along inside the house as kids always. You know what I mean? So somebody had to get get bodied, and I'm pretty sure it was always John until now. And the same thing with Antonia. I guess, like, maybe the, the, the lady might not be so, like, they might not fight all the time, but, like, there is some kind of, there got to be some kind of sibling rivalry there. You know what I mean? All right. So let's call it, guys. Yeah, you, know, let's call you, it. you got a good point. 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 Uh, if you like this content, please, please smack that like button on your way out. Hit the subscribe little bell so you can get notifications to all Ashy Knuckle content, Ashy Knuckle USA and global all around the world. Holla at your boy. Zip that shit up. And zip it the fuck out. Zippity doo dah. Bye bye.